skills, I believe these are the skills that we need to keep in the challenge we face. You know, any certain time, an election, we have uh, certain challenges in the country, and I believe the challenges regarding our economy and the jobs and some of the international competitiveness that we have in spending. I believe that the qualities that Mitt has and the totality of his experience, so he's been in business, and then he takes the Olympics, which were a big turnaround, and then we came here to Massachusetts, he worked on a bipartisan working with Democrats and Republicans. And I think those skills uniquely qualify him for the challenges that we have today. Now, I'm sure in your debates, somebody apparently was you who was defending, uh, uh, I don't defending, uh, representing the governor, had some points of view and all of these. And again, who, who um, uh, jobs in the economy or people about spending? So we have people that make deals. Then there's the people that do the political operations in the field. So there's a whole group of people that organize all the volunteers. There's a whole group of people that raise the money. So each of those have people in charge. And those are paid staff, smaller are paid staff, and we have an extraordinary number of volunteers. So if you look at the most people, you can see a volunteer in the phone bank. the needs of our programs where uh, our existing facility couldn't hold the capacity of what our demands were so uh, we had an engineering firm look into our existing fields and suggest some uh, improvements to make to uh, meet the demands of our our programs youth and high school nice um, was the project funded privately it was um, through the Dover Sherburn Booster Club we made a push out to the community and we're able to complete phase one and again this is a three phase project uh, we plan on working on for three summers and uh, so this is step one so it's very exciting uh, first step. How long was the process to go from the old natural field to the new turf field? Seven and a half weeks which is an amazing timeline it's tight uh, most uh, contractors we talked to and turf installers told us it would take 12 weeks to get it done um, and a few agreed that it could be done in 10 weeks so seven and a half weeks was the timeline we gave so it took uh, a lot of work and a lot of communication to, to be able to get this make this happen over the summer cool what are the advantages of having a turf field on campus well really I think the biggest difference is it doesn't matter how much use it gets so uh, we can put our PE classes out running around on it you're not going to damage it where a grass field we try to limit the use of 200 hours um, and that's tough to do mm -hmm. what do you have to do to maintain a turf field how many well there's years not too much uh, how many years so we're hoping to get 10 to 12 out of this one it's uh, the, the newest fun. ones uh, the technology's improved a lot over the over the years about 10 years they've been making this style of synthetic turf so uh, 10 to 12 years is what they're expecting out of this one um, I think most are outliving their expected life um, so you don't know it's uh, it's so new technology that mm -hmm. it's really hard to put a finger on and to maintain it um, about once a month we have to brush the pellets and add some new pellets to it and uh, it's quite minimal about an hour once a month okay is the turf field made out of rubber it is so the uh, actual green material you see is recycled uh, plastic soda bottles oh. and that type of material <laughs> And the infill, the black rubber pellets, are recycled tires, so they're chewed up and, uh, and laid in to absorb impact. So. Does the turf need to be relined for games, or are there permanent lines in place? Uh, the lines you see here are permanent. We do have two little arcs, one for field hockey and one for girls lacrosse that we paint on. Uh, painting the lines on the turf lasts about a month, uh, so it's not as constant maintenance. So it's a, it's a great, uh, the fields are ready to go any day. So it's, it's uh, very nice to have. Mm -hmm. Is the field being dedicated to anyone? Uh, tonight we'll, we'll do the dedication ceremony and we're excited. So in our Searle Field at Frothingham Stadium. How have the students, athletes, liked the change of natural to turf? Is there anything they needed to do differently to plan equipment or training to get ready for the first season on turf? 
I think all our athletes are excited to be on the turf. Probably one thing is we uh, can't get every, everybody on it enough. Um, everybody wants to be on it more. There's no difference in training. I think over the past couple of years, um, the high schools across the state uh, are going to turf, so we have played on it a lot. Um, and uh, just to have it as a home field. Um, some people wear different sneakers on it, but mm -hmm. really you can wear cleats, you can wear sneakers or uh, turf shoes. Um, everything works. What teams are allowed to play in the field? Well, every team's going to be allowed to play on it. Uh, we, we do have some times out. The field is lined for football, boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse, soccer, and field hockey. Uh, and so those will be the games. And also track and field will use it. And there will be a big advantage in the spring on those days where uh, we can't get it to start the spring practices because there's snow on the ground. We can go out on this. So baseball, softball will be out mm -hmm. here and hitting pop flies. So it will be a nice, uh, it's really a complete uh, program use. Um, well, the last question is, are the high school and middle school gym classes able to use it? But yeah, as we you can, can see, see that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter how much you use. The, the fields wear out because of uh, exposure to the sun, but the fibers start to break down, and that's when it needs to be replaced. So we can put as much use on we want, um, which is great for the community. And we. Lightly greased pan. Stir package of vanilla cake, one egg, and one stick of butter melted into a bowl. Spread the batter evenly onto the bottom of the pan. cream cheese, cake mix, two eggs, and cocoa powder into a new bowl. Stir. mixing, add the powdered sugar. one stick of butter melted and one package of chocolate chips into the batter.
spread the brownie batter evenly on top of the vanilla batter. Apple makes them, and Steve Jobs is a visionary. The new computers in the Mac I lab. think that it's worth the money, and that the Macs are faster, stronger, and better, and could win in any fight. Um, they're also Apple products, and um, I think that they're very efficient. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, we're here with Mr. Broody, who is the head of the math department, and we are going to be asking him some questions about the new Apple computer labs. Go Apple. What are the new programs students can use? Oh, on these computers. Okay, so um, there's nothing really new on any of them. Uh, but uh, the biggest advantage of having the Macs is that you have uh, uh, all the Adobe products, so Photoshop and Fireworks and all those things, and they run a lot faster than they ran on the old PCs uh, because those, those Adobe programs are really designed for uh, the Mac processor and the Mac graphics card. So Where did, uh, or when did the uh, new computers get proposed? It was actually, that was really cool because it was actually, uh, we didn't even think about it until like last February. And then we sort of proposed them last February, and uh, Mrs. Tebow was really, or, or uh, uh, Mrs. Gracia and Mrs. Tebow were really the most involved in it. And they sort of uh, uh, proposed the idea, and, and uh, Do uh, Mr. Bliss, the um, assistant superintendent, was really uh, aggressively sort of pursued it. And the next thing we knew, we had funding for it for two whole labs. We didn't think we were going to get one, and then it just, you know, but it went just like that. It was awesome. Oh. So it was fast. Uh, what would you say the greatest benefit of the new computers is? Uh, I think the biggest thing, honestly, is that um, kids are now in school using the technology that they're used to using at home, <laughs> as opposed yeah. to uh, you know having these great computers at home and then coming into school and having to work on sort of older things with older software and whatnot. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so for a final question. Uh, yeah. How long uh, would you say these computers um, are going to last? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, in my in my own life, I count on four years <laughs> out of a, out of a computer. You know, I figure if a computer lasts me four years, it's done pretty well. But mm -hmm. because of the way technology improves uh, and and software requires more out of technology, mm -hmm. uh, it usually seems to be about four or five years, something like that. So. Okay. I don't know. I, I'm sure the tech people hope to get more out of it than that. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank cool. you very much. You're welcome. Okay, the USDA is supposed to make changes in their guidelines in these, uh, for school meals every five years. However, there was a lapse uh, in the last 15 years, and until the Hunger Free Act of 2010 came out, it was 15 years with the same nutrition standards. So these new standards are based on the latest nutrition science um, and based on the dietary guidelines for Americans as well as input from the Institute of Medicine.
There's been a lot of help this year from the USDA, the De Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, John Stalker Institute at Framingham State, and the School Nutrition Association, both local and national, to go through these 280 pages of the Hunger Free Act law. Um, training will continue throughout the year. This is a year for, of change for school lunch programs nationally. Um, but the staff is, is learning to deal with the new meal pattern. Uh, the fruits and vegetables we've increased, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just putting more variety of fruits and vegetables out there. But when it comes to your meat or meat alternate and your grain options, there's a lot more weighing and measuring to be done uh, this year than ever. And there's a lot of products don't fit the guidelines exactly and you might have to modify the size of something. Um, the students are doing okay. They're, for the most part, we haven't seen a huge change in numbers for the amount of school meals being purchased. But there have been some questions about, you know, where's the cheese on my burger? Where's, where's, how come my bagel is smaller? Uh, that type of thing. Specific changes are based, the, you, uh, we now serve only eight ounce non-fat or low-fat milk. Um, there is the requirements for vegetables and variety of vegetables uh, to be served over a week. There uh, is limits on calories, which calorie maximums, which we never had in the past. Um, and these are particularly noticeable on is your, your meat and, and breads, basically. Break this year is the need to use all whole grains uh, due to, this is based on the Massachusetts law that is, covers competitive foods and beverages or what you would know as your a la carte options. Uh, so this year, our bagels, muffins, breakfast, uh, muffins or biscuits, uh, coffee rolls, cereal, everything is whole grain. So that's the biggest change to the snack. And for lunch, um, it's, you, though there is an increase in vegetables, there may be a decrease uh, in size of the entrees and that may be noticeable. Uh, school lunch is a nonprofit program. We buy food to prepare it for the students, to sell it to, we sell it to the students to pay our staff, pay for more food and supplies, uh, repair the equipment we have if we have problems, or buy new equipment if needed. Um, but yes, we have seen a drop in revenue this year. And I think we're starting to see that we've got some things that are to helping fill the void, uh, whole grain cookies, uh, baked chips or uh, pop chips, things like that. Um, right now, when manufacturers create a snack item, they're dealing with different regulations from, you know, 50 different states. Uh, but the USDA will be coming out with a national ruling on a la carte options very soon and that will allow manufacturers to follow one set of rules for all snacks.